Carol Ray, and I am here with our second episode of Thriving Together, a program intended for Beverly seniors, for people over 60. I have two guests today from the Senior Center, from the Beverly COA, Suzanne and Claire. We want to tell you about all of the good things that are available in Beverly. And I want to just tell you, I come by this naturally. I grew up in Beverly, left town in my mid-20s, was gone for 15 years, then came to my senses and realized what I had given up. So I came back to Beverly, and I still love it here. So I want you to know about all of the activities that are available at the Beverly Senior Center. Suzanne, would tell us your title. Sure. I'm the Assistant Director at the Beverly Council on Aging and Senior Community Center, located here in Beverly. And I, too, am originally from Beverly and left for a while and came back. And um, I love my community and I love helping the seniors. And we have more than just activities at the Senior Center that we want to tell you about today. Along with me, I brought my cohort, uh, Claire Mulvihill, who is the um, outreach coordinator for the Beverly Council on Aging. So I'll let her tell you a little bit about what she does as well. Yeah, I'm Claire. Um, I've worked at the Beverly Senior Center for about three years now. Um, I grew up in Wenham, so not Beverly, unfortunately, but um, <laughs> I did live in Beverly for a few years after graduating from college in the area, um, and I just, I love Beverly so much, so um, I'm privileged to be the outreach coordinator here um, and get to do uh, different things with the seniors of Beverly. So I want to tell you, before we go any further, we're all a little nervous <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't like our normal day-to-day -day life, so we're a little nervous. We care about this. We, mm -hmm. we want to convey information about all of these things that are available, and we're a little nervous, so I want you to know that. <laughs> so I have in front of me the Garden City Courier. This, uh, what would you call it, a pamphlet? A newsletter. A newsletter tells about all of the things that happen at the Senior Center. There's a new issue every month. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about this and how sure. people can get it? Yep, so the newsletter, like Carol said, is a monthly publication. We have it available online, or if you're a member of the Senior Center, you can get it mailed to you for free if you live in Beverly. Outside of Beverly, it's just a $10 a year subscription. And you can also receive it via email if you um, don't want the extra paper pollution around. So you can also access it via email or directly from the Beverly Council on Aging website. So if you're handy on the computer, you could Google Beverly Council on Aging newsletter and you would come directly to the link where you could click on it and it would show you not only the current newsletter, but it would show you newsletters from the past as well. Yeah, because there's, there's so much going on here. Mm -hmm. So when I think of the Senior Center, I think of it in a variety of ways. There are some things that I do every week or virtually every week. Mm -hmm. I happen to love a Wednesday. I, I don't want to advertise this too much because there will be too many of us there. Mm -hmm. But on Wednesday at noon, there's a Bones and Balance class mm -hmm. with Jen that I just love. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my most routine things right now. But there is, I don't know, where should we go first? We've got, there's, a, there's I'm going to say at least three potential audiences for things at the Senior Center. One of those audiences is people who can actually come to the Senior Center and do exercises or do, thing, do things. What, can you tell us about the intergenerational yeah, so Good. some of the activities we have um, include intergenerational programming or membership, um, and we partner with local colleges to offer game nights. Um, we also have a program that some of our interns coordinate, which is fall leaf raking. So volunteer groups um, like uh, college uh, outreach groups will go to people's houses in the fall and rake their leaves for free. Um, and like I mentioned, the game nights um, are usually Endicott students or Gordon College students coming and playing games. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think the breakfast program as yeah, well. Yeah, we also have a breakfast club, which is held here at the high school um, and that, or at the senior center as well. And that's um, about 30 or so high schoolers partner with about um, however many seniors we can get um, to have breakfasts uh, once a month. And that is kind of to share intergenerationally some wisdom or just talk about different topics um, and enjoy well, so, breakfast together. So sometimes that takes place at the high school? Yes, mm -hmm. so it alternates I didn't actually. Know about this. Yeah, yeah, so it alternates um, either at the high school or um, at the senior center um, every other month during the school year. Nice, yeah. nice. And I, I don't know, do you want to tell us about some of the other activities, some of the things that go on every week? Yeah, tell sure. So um, we do have a lot of exercise programs and wellness programs, which um, are offered online as well. So for those of you who are not able to come into the center, we do have exercise available to you as well. Um, they can tune into Channel 8, which is the public channel here on BevCam, and there are programs at 9 in the morning and at noon, and there may even be more. I didn't comb through the whole menu, but I know every day at 9 and noon, if you want to get your exercise on, you can just tune to Channel 8, and a full one-hour program with Joanne is available to you, just like you would get at the Senior Center. So we hope those that aren't able to come in for any reason, do take advantage of that as well. Did, did that begin with COVID, the online I'm offerings? not sure if it began with COVID, but it's been going strong, right. for sure. Yeah. They upped it during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I think this is one of the advantages of COVID, one of the good byproducts, is that we've learned to do mm -hmm. some things online, mm -hmm. because sometimes, for whatever reason, you, don't, you just don't want to get into your car mm -hmm. and, and go someplace. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so one of the audiences is people who cannot get to the senior center. And there, there's a variety of online programs from those, such as Suzanne just described. Mm -hmm. um, there are some programs that I don't use weekly, but I use annually, and one of them is Shine. So who wants to tell us about Shine? Yeah, I can talk about Shine. Um, so SHINE is a, uh, a Massachusetts program, actually, um, and it's unbiased, free healthcare counseling um, from trained counselors. And so we have some in-house people or someone that's over the phone for people that can't come into the senior center. Um, and we have counselors that will help people navigate their Medicare, um, you know, sign-ups or um, mass health applications, stuff like that, and they will walk them through the process. It's a very complicated process, we've found, so it's really helpful to have someone walk you through that. Um, and so that's available. You can sign up at the, the front desk or call in and uh, get a slot for um, a time to meet with someone, and that's mm -hmm. been a really popular program. Y yeah, and I want to tell you about mm -hmm. my experience with that. Yeah. So I'm on Medicare, mm -hmm. and I have, and I'm not going to remember the name of it, but it, like an additional program. There's yeah. an additional program that can be like Blue, Cloth, Blue Cloth, Cross Blue Shield mm -hmm. or a variety of other things. Yeah. And I'm on multiple medications, as are many people my age, mm. and it's not always clear to me mm. what is the best program for me to yes. use. We get to change programs once a year, so I, I'm going to say the fall in general is the time mm -hmm. that we can change, yeah. and the programs all come out with their offerings, mm -hmm. so to be able to come to the senior center and work with someone on what medications I take, what needs, what are my personal needs, yeah. and mm -hmm. then find out what's the best additional program for me to use for insurance so that my costs are the least. Mm -hmm. I, if, if that were the only thing the senior center <laughs> offered, I'd be happy. But there's, but there's so much more. So I really love that. That's great. I really love that. Yeah, a lot of people find it really helpful. Just the whole healthcare system in general is pretty tricky. So it's nice to have someone walking you through that. Right. Which is great. Right. Mm -hmm. and, the, and I know there's a lot of food programs. There's mm -hmm. a huge number. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the food programs. We do. Mm -hmm. we, um, food access is a really critical part of what we do at the senior center. And actually, Claire 
heads up quite a bit of our food program. So I'm actually going to turn it to Claire <laughs> okay. because yeah. um, she's been working on this for years and developed some great programs. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have a number of programs. Um, we coordinate out of our kitchen that we have. We coordinate Meals on Wheels, um, which is partnered through Senior Care. Um, many of you will probably have heard of it. It's a pretty big state program. Um, but Meals on Wheels, we um, help people sign up for SNAP, which is the food stamps, um, also a Massachusetts program, and that's pretty pop popular as well. Um, and we partner with Beverly Bootstraps, which is the local community um, food bank, to offer a grocery program every week or every other week. Um, we also have a farm stand in the summer, um, which we partner with New Entry Sustainable Farming Project, as well as our community garden as well. Um, and that's another big thing. We have the community garden, which provides a lot of great produce um, and opportunities for people to volunteer. So it's, uh, yeah, pretty robust um, offerings that we have at the Senior Center for Food. Um, additionally, we also partner with some local restaurants and bakeries to offer um, some leftover food that they have that's still fresh, but, you know, wasn't bought for some reason. Um, and then we're, all, all, we're able to offer that for free here at the Senior Center. So... We have a lot of different offerings if people are in need of, um, you know, more nutritious food or some guidance on that, we're happy to help with that. We also serve our congregate meals mm -hmm. in-house, in so we have yeah. breakfast and lunch available every day mm -hmm. for any senior. Um, it's a voluntary donation uh, for the lunch, mm -hmm. so if someone doesn't have the money for lunch, we don't want that to stop them. We want them to come in and have a good hot meal and enjoy other people's company mm -hmm. and... Um, yeah don't go home hungry. Right. Well, so you're mentioning something that I, I wasn't thinking about, but I think it's important. It, well, some people find it easy to go out and connect with other people in a variety mm -hmm. of ways. And for some people, it's more difficult. If you're among those people for whom it's more difficult, coming to the senior center, what happens is you see the same people over and over. I'm not good at remembering people's names, but I remember their faces. Mm. So I love it when I come into the senior center for something and see somebody. Sometimes I see a neighbor that I haven't seen for a while, and I see her at the senior center. I, I love that. I love that. How, how many people come in for in the, in the morning for coffee or at lunch? About, about how many people come well, in? Well, it used to be a lot more prior to COVID. I would say probably for lunch, uh, between 20 to 25 people on a day. But what we do offer a special lunch, mm -hmm. um, a root lunch, a special lunch, and we build themes around it. So a lot of times we'll have entertainment with the lunch, and we'll try to draw in more people. Mm -hmm. Like um, We had one over um, St. Patrick's Day, we had the um, Irish theme, and we had entertainment. So it, it just adds another layer, and bring, it does bring in more people mm -hmm. um, to share in the conversation and the music and the dancing sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so we do try to make it fun. So a couple times a month we'll have the entertainment. So if you're new and you want to try something with a lot of people, one of those special lunches would be the way to go, and they're mm -hmm. always listed in the newsletter. And I, it, this is something I've never done, but I always think about it. You do something for birthdays every month. Yep, Tell us about we that. We do. So every month, um, actually, Senator Joan Lovely um, donates birthday cupcakes mm -hmm. for us. And um, we just did one a couple weeks ago for March. So anyone whose birthday is within that month, so for this month it'll be April, um, we'll have a little birthday celebration. We'll sing happy birthday and hand out cupcakes and <laughs> wish them, give them a card and hope they, nice. it's building. Mm -hmm. It's slowly building. We okay, just, we I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to come to the next one. Good. Because right? I like cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Good. you mentioning Senator Joan Lovely reminds me that we have political people. I, mm -hmm. I don't mean this as confrontational, right. but people who are our elected officials, mm -hmm. yes. some of them come once or twice a month. Tell us, yes. tell us about that program. Yes. Um, we have office hours for the mayor. So Mayor Beverly comes twice a month. Um, uh, Jerry Paracella, our, our rep, comes twice a month. Mm -hmm. Senator Joan Lovely comes once a month. 
um, counselor at large Julie Flowers comes once a month and those are open office hours anybody can come in with concerns or mm -hmm. maybe praise and come in mm -hmm. and just sit down and in the dining room and have a conversation Mm -hmm. So it's, thank it's you. Keeps it makes thank them you. accessible, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, okay. So I want to say something here that's not specifically about the senior center. I, I've I've been active to a certain extent in politics for decades, like more than mm -hmm. fifty years, long, long, long time. And but for whatever reason, during the last couple of years, I have had an increased appreciation for anyone who runs for office and then agrees to serve. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, a lot of headaches, and we need those people. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to put this out publicly. I have great appreciation for people in at any level of office mm -hmm. who serve us. And it, so maybe you just want to come in for one of these hours and just say thank you mm -hmm. to Senator Lovely or Rep. Paracella or uh, Mayor Cahill or President Julie Flowers. Did I leave out anybody? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but whatever. They, they deserve our praise and our appreciation because what they're doing takes a lot of time. It does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are we leaving out about what's available? Oh, wait. I'm seeing something right here on the cover. This mm -hmm. is the April... Yeah, it is April. It's the April Garden City Courier. And something that's not usually on here is name the, Vinny, the minivan contest. Who wants to tell us about that? I can tell you. <laughs> so um, we generously benefited from a lovely woman, uh, Sharon Delaney, who left us in her will. And she left us with enough money and then some that we were able to purchase a hybrid minivan, um, non cdl license, a regular license, so anyone in the senior center can drive it. Um, and it's a backup for our transportation. It also serves for um, small trips or helps us to run our errands for all these activities. We usually need a lot of supplies, so we try to save money and go out and find the bargains and, and buy our own supplies, and we use the van for that. And we really want to honor Sharon. Um, by naming the minivan, <laughs> something to honor her, and um, obviously we wanted that to come from the members. Mm -hmm. So we're having a little contest, and we're, we're, we're collecting entries now. So if you have a good idea on what to name um. our Chrysler Pacifica minivan, <laughs> uh, we're open to it. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, yeah. and related to that, tell us about like driving Tra services, transportation, that are transportation services. So that is a, a big part of outreach because a lot of seniors at some point typically give up their car mm -hmm. or that maybe their vehicle is too expensive yeah. to maintain mm -hmm. so they decide to give up their vehicle, which is a big change for a lot of people. So we want them to know we have transportation. We do have um, four full-size vans and they're driven by CDL licensed people. Uh, they can transport people who are um, in wheelchairs. We have ramps and lifts uh, to get them on the van. Um, transportation is, we keep it very affordable. If you wanna come to the senior center or go home, it's zero dollars. If you'd like to travel anywhere within Beverly, it's a dollar each way. And if you wanna go to Peabody or Beverly or I think it's Hamilton and Wenham, maybe Salem now for doctor's appointments. We do those a couple times a month. That's $4 each way. So it's, it's a good deal. It is a good, good deal. deal. So there is a transportation agreement. Um, it's curb to curb service. So um, our members do need to be independent enough to get on the bus, sit on the bus, and get themselves off the bus. But that's the only restriction. And, we and, also and that's do from, trips too. And, and that's from their homes, yep. right? So they don't have to be standing in a corner someplace. No, they go right to their home and pick them up. Yeah, right. yeah, it's a valuable service. And yeah. um, we find our participants, it's increasing. So there's definitely more and more need out there. And another good reason why we got the minivan. Okay, okay. So I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to. I'm going to come up with a possible a name, name for it. I, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Well, and tell us about other trips. 
Yeah, we do day trips during the month. Um, this month we're going to see the recycling center, which is probably something you'd love. Oh, yes. Um, up in, P is it Peabody on Route 1? Yeah. Um, the Republic Recycling Center and lunch at Red's. Um, last month that. we went to the Irish Cottage for a nice Irish meal. And sometimes we go to museums. Uh, we do a monthly trip to one of the casinos, typically Encore or the Brook up in Seabrook. And then um, next month we're going to Nahant just for a day trip. We're trying to get really creative with our trips um, and let some of the members kind of be the tour guide on the mm -hmm. trip. And um, then we also partner with Colette Tours, which is an outside company that would do overnight trips. So if you're really adventurous and you want to get out, like go to, I, they go up to Kenny Bunk Port for the weekend, then we can connect you with a service for that too. So, so like weekend trips, not just mm -hmm. day trips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What, what are we leaving out that people might want to know about? Um, I was just going to mention the durable medical equipment that we have. Oh, yes. um, that is something that we collect, um, uh, you know, good quality, durable medical equipment. So uh, maybe walkers or crutches, um, sometimes wheelchairs, um, and people uh, ask for them and we're able to supply them for free. Um, so if you have a need of that, call or stop by. Um, we're always taking donations for that. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty popular program that we have. Um, okay. Additionally, we also have a number of presentations that we have each month. It varies month to month, but in the past we've had, um, you know, mental health discussions, uh, TED Talks, which is the, oh, the, yes. um, the technology education something, I forget what TED stands for, but, um, it, you know, little talks about different topics like anti-racism or sleep hygiene. So learning how to sleep better, um, and taking care of yourself in that way. So we have a number of people that come in as well, or our staff facilitates those discussions. Yeah. Let me mention something. I have occasionally gone to some of those discussions and when they have a TED talk, mm -hmm. you sit around the screen and you watch the TED talk, mm -hmm. but then there's a discussion among yes. the people there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's interesting just to watch them by yourself at home, mm -hmm. but it's way better yes. to be able to talk about it with somebody else yeah. because usually it triggers something mm -hmm. that you think, oh, well, I wonder about this. And so you have a chance to bounce those ideas off, yeah, of, off of people. We also have um, a number of workshops. So we, I believe we had Spanish lessons or that's still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, we're having a decluttering workshop coming up. Um, and so, you know, different educational workshops, maybe end of life planning or planning ahead for your funeral, um, legal workshops. Um, right. We have a, a lawyer that um, you can call for like 15 minutes um, and he'll give you, you know, free legal advice. Um, I think that's, yep. yeah, am I leaving anything out? Yep. Um, we also, one thing Claire does mm. a lot of, is she helps mm. people with fuel assistance yes. and housing applications. Yes. How could um, I forget? <laughs> yes, those are really important. Mm -hmm. um, those, those applications can become daunting for mm -hmm. people, and there's a lot of times you need backup paperwork. Mm -hmm. So Claire is very good at helping mm. people organize all their paperwork, fill out the applications, and we'll submit them. Mm -hmm. And we can sometimes follow up on them, too, and help mm -hmm. people see where they stand. Yeah. Um, and, similar. Yeah, no, those are those are really good. And something that I did, oh, I'm going to say six months ago, something like that, was a one-time thing that I don't remember it ever being offered before. It was through AARP, and it was a senior. It was like driving for seniors. Mm -hmm. It was in class. Mm -hmm. It was three or four hours. Mm -hmm. It was incredibly helpful. We host that I think three or four times a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Be yeah. on the lookout if you're interested yeah. in that, or if you know someone, because it's very popular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was fabulous. It was mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, what else? We also what offer else? tech support. Yeah. Um, there's oh, a yes. lot of people yes. that um, need help. Uh, our phones now, as people know, the smartphones are so smart. <laughs> um, they're smarter than a lot of us. Um, there's a lot of benefits to them that people, it's, it's a little bit of a maze if you're not used to the technology. So we have tech support for telephones mm -hmm. and I think um, iPads, like tablets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, currently. We hope to offer more tech support as far as like computer lessons in the future, but mm -hmm. we're working on getting some grants for that. But right so, now we do have tech mm. support, one-on-one -on -one support. So we people can come in with their device with their and phone. their questions? Yep, they can sign mm -hmm. up for a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's fabulous. Yes. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to add one more thing. We also partner very closely with Senior Care, which is the local elder services. Um, and a lot of my job is uh, either referring people there or um, getting people resources from Senior Care. So that can include um, home care, like laundry um, or cleaning or other things that are involved with the home, taking care of the home. Um, and they also coordinate the Meals on Wheels. Um, they have an information and referral department. Um, so that is um, both uh, outside of the senior center at their locations, but also they do have uh, office hours here um, at the Beverly Senior Center. So that's a new program that we're offering, and we're trying to get people to come in and mm -hmm. um, ask their questions and get connected with a great resource. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what I'm hearing, and, and this is a, a lot of this is my experience as well, the senior center is for seniors who are active, who are very active, who want to come in and do exercises and do things there or go on trips. It's also for people who are way less active, mm -hmm. who need connections to yeah. other to other resources. Yes. The, and the, the senior center is a resource for yes. that. Yeah, and families and caregivers. We have a lot of adult oh, children um, yes. of older adults that will call in looking for resources. And so we're able to connect and uh, with them and support them in that journey as well. So, yeah. Any last minute thoughts? We just want more people to come in and take yeah. advantage of our resources. Yeah. And, and, that's and give us ideas if yes. there's anything that yeah. um, we're not offering that maybe they've seen at another senior center or maybe they've heard about maybe through a news program or something. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you yeah. both for being my yeah. guest today. Oh, I want to say again, this, this is Thriving Together a new program for Beverly seniors, for people over 60. And let me look at my notes so I give you this information correctly. It airs at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday and 10 a.m. on Saturday on BevCamp's Channel 8, the public channel. Um, and after that, it's available on YouTube, so you can see it. You can see it anytime. I also want to put in a plug for a service that I recently <laughs> needed. A local Beverly company, we, our kitchen sink was not draining. My husband could not clear it. We called Dash Drains, a small, a, a relatively small Beverly service. They were fabulous, mm -hmm. came quickly. My drains are cleared. I'm very happy with them. This is not a paid announcement. It's my own personal experience. Thank you for tuning in to Thriving Together. Thank you.